Hi, this is Megan Jacks, Creative Memories Independent Advisor. And today's video is going to feature a layout assembly with design insights. And I'm gonna be working with a sketch number one from the Creative Memories November 2020 virtual crop. So if you wanna get a copy of this sketch, go ahead and head over to the Creative Memories website to their blog and search for November 2020 virtual crop and you'll find sketch number one. So we take a little bit of a closer look at the sketch. You can see um, the main features here are that it has a nine square background to it and they've got two um, horizontal photos. This one could easily be rotated to have um, vertical photos. So there's lots of options here. It is a single page sketch. And I can tell you the first thing I thought when I saw this is I'm gonna go ahead and make it a two page sketch or two page layout. And I'm planning to just go ahead and mirror this nine image square design on the second page. So I'm actually gonna to put together two pages that the background itself is um, pretty much identical and we'll just arrange photos on there um, to make the two pages work. So to get started here, I knew um, the photos I was gonna be working with, I have um, some photos from um, February of 2019 when Seattle had a really big snowstorm come through. I'm working on a series of layouts from there and I've been working with the Frost collection, which is um, kind of a navy and white winter collection. So I had some paper that I wanted to work with. It's this really pretty winter floral design and the photos I'm using don't have any, any of my like kids playing in the snow. They're, um, they're more scenery based. So I decided that this winter floral um, pattern would be really nice. In this layout, the sketch, you can see they kind of indicate that there's um, different patterns or different papers in these squares. And I thought about using multiple patterns in here, kind of the way the sketch indicates, but then I was having a problem finding another pattern that I liked. It was starting to get overwhelming. So I decided just to use the single pattern. It does show a, um, a mat of some sort for each one of those squares. So I'm using navy as my mat, and you can kind of start to see it take shape here, um, what those squares would look like. And now I needed a background paper, and I struggled a little bit with this. Some of the tonal patterns that were in with the Frost collection, um, I liked them, but I was already using them in other layouts, so I needed to find something that would work. And it actually had me remembering that there was a really pretty mid to light tone um, blue um, pattern in the autumn awaits, or excuse me, hello autumn collection. And so I got this um, tonal blue. It's kind of got this swirly leaf pattern to it. Almost would think of like um, frost on the window kind of thing. So that's going to be my background. And I had two sheets of it, which was really important since I wanted both um, pages of the double layout to uh, match. So here is my overall design theme going. I do have in this overall series of layouts I'm creating with my photos, I am working in crimson. Um, I love the red and the blue together with the winter stuff. So I will be working in some of this lovely red with the, um, the blues. So the next step after I had kind of picked out my theme that I was going with with my papers was figuring out what size of squares these needed to be. So I don't have, um, Creative Memories doesn't give us um, specific sizes of things in the sketches. They want us just to be more inspired and make it work for what we've got going on. But the one thing I know is it's gonna be less than four because if they were four inches wide, they would take up the entire page. There would be no background. And the other thing I had to think about was I am only gonna use one pattern for all nine of my boxes. I am actually though needing to create a total of 18 boxes or 18 squares for my background because I'm making it a double page layout. So I wanted to be as efficient as possible with my pattern paper. And I just know from experience, one of the best ways to do that is if I'm talking squares and I'm talking of getting the most out of my paper, I either would cut in a four inch, um, four by four square. So I would get um, three squares per 
four inch segment, or I could cut it in three inch strips and then three inch squares, total squares, and I would get a total of um, 16 squares per 12 inch piece of paper. So I decided that I wanted my squares on my pattern paper to be three inch squares. And then from there, I needed to figure out how big to make the navy mats. I started out with three and a half inches first. Three and a half inches got to be a little bit overwhelming for my three inch square. Having a quarter inch mat all the way around was just a little too much. So I settled on three and three eighths. So I have a set of navy mats cut to three and three eighths inch square. I don't mind being a little bit off and not having um, perfect use of my cardstock because I have lots of cardstock. It's my pattern paper that I want to be as efficient as possible. So then I cut my 12 inch piece of pattern paper into a bunch of three inch squares. So those will be what I will want to affix to each other. And um, then I will work on getting those put onto the background. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my background paper. And the key here is I need to center. I need to center my center square. And to do that, I'm going to use my cutting mat. My 12 inch cutting mat. And I'm also going to grab my ruler and I've got a, about a three inch or a th just not quite three and a half inch square. So I'm going to come up here and I can use my six inches, my guide, and I can tell that centering it, I'm going to come out to the seven about seven and three quarters on one side and not quite uh, just over four and a quarter on this side so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my ruler and i'm going to set it on here lining up here at eight and a quarter and then coming down here to the bottom to four and a quarter so i'm nice and straight i'm going to bring this down and i actually need to rotate this the other direction so that i can see my six inch mark here. And if you have the zero center ruler, that's perfect. So right here should be about center overall. So I'm gonna use repositionable adhesive, which is my favorite. And I'm gonna go ahead and center. So I'm coming up here just a little bit past four and a quarter, not quite to seven and three quarters there. So this should be center on my, um, on my 12 by 12 paper. Now the next thing I wanted to do, I did determine that I needed to have about a half an inch overall spacing around the outside. So to place my next piece, I'm gonna go ahead and once again use my ruler I'm gonna line it up here in the corner at half an inch, come down here to half an inch, and put my adhesive on the back. And I'm gonna line up once again, that just past that four and a quarter, not quite seven and three quarters. Visually check right here, it looks really good. The next ones, are a little bit easier to put on because I can just come up here and I know it needs to be half an inch on both sides. I'm giving a gentle push down on my ruler there so that I can't slide my cardstock underneath. Same here at the bottom. So you can see it's starting to take shape. 
and then I would just keep working around. I can use that half inch. on each side now. And I am noting here that I'm a little off. So I'm gonna double check this. I'm a little off here in this center, um, this direction. So I'm going to pull this one up once again. This is why I'm using repositionable. And I'm going to re reset this. Got it lined up. And I like this spacing already. I can tell it's a little bit better there in the center. And I'm just going to keep working all the way around. Having using the ruler definitely helps. Just double check your measurements, use repositionable adhesive, and you'll be good to go. Now I played around with my spacing. I did a lot of dry fitting and a lot of um, trying to figure out exactly how I wanted it to go so that when it came to putting this video together, I would hopefully be fairly quick about it. And I found that I needed a little bit of space. I thought maybe I could cluster them a little bit more to the middle and keep these joints a little bit more narrow. Um, but I actually came into a problem with my second, um, page because of the size of the photos and the photo mats I'm using. So that's why I determined that this half inch all the way around. And remember, I'm going to duplicate this onto a second sheet. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start applying my pattern paper and I'm just gonna eyeball putting each one of these in place. I use just a little bit of repositionable in each corner. It stays um, tacky. You can always kind of pull it off, but I've never had a problem with anything falling apart. So don't worry about repositionable. Um, when they say repositionable, it just means it's not as sticky as our normal adhesive and I just keep going and I actually realize I don't want this up in this corner I'm gonna come back to that in a few minutes as to why I'm not putting one there I had to figure out a way so I need a total of 18 pattern squares and I only have 16. So I made a couple of design choices that helped me save what I was gonna do. So I have two horizontal photos that I'm gonna be putting here and they needed some help. They were not quite popping off the page the way I widened them to. So I cut two mats. My photos themselves are five and a quarter by three and three fourths. I started out with four by sixes and it just wasn't working for spacing. So I ended up um, to trimming them down to five and a quarter by three and three fourths. I then went ahead and made mats out of navy that are five and three fourths by four and a quarter. And so let me show you what that looks like. Go ahead and put those on. I really liked how the navy mat does look really nice. It pops the snow and I could have just worked with the navy and called it good, but
But remember, all my other layouts in this series of layouts have that crimson color in them. So I had to figure out a way to bring in the crimson. And here you can start to see, if I had gone the full six inches uh, for my photo, I would have been like almost too wide for how I have my squares spaced. So I needed to bring them in a little bit narrower. I was able to keep them pretty much the same um, height. They're close to four inches. I didn't cut as much off there. But now I've got to get that crimson worked in there. So what I decided to do was a real thin mat behind it. So this is six by four and a half, which is going to give me roughly um, one eighth of an inch all the way around. And that was just to allow everything to pop off the photo, off the page. It was that hint of red that once you start flipping through the book, my album, you'll see that red coming through in every layout. And I didn't want it to be overpowering. Just wanted that hint in there. Um, you can take the time if you want to cut out some of the cardstock in the middle. If that's um, a, um, a savings issue, if you want to keep things a little lighter weight, stretch your materials a little further. So there I've got the um, overall photo placement. I stayed pretty faithful with my photo placement of the sketch with my horizontal images. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those down. And then I'm still using adhesive. I'm not gonna push them down really hard yet. I'm gonna kind of just leave them loose on there because I really need to make sure that they're evenly spaced. So I can see I need to bring this one up a little bit. And once I'm happy with my placement, I've got some even borders, I can go ahead and I can push them down. Now, a little bit of what to do in these other two corners. Remember, I'm not using my pattern paper because I'm going to um, save that for my other page. So I decided to go ahead and do my journaling box in one of these squares. So I have a piece of white journaling paper. It's three by three, same size as my pattern paper. I'm gonna go ahead and tack that into place. I ran out of adhesive, so I'm gonna switch my cartridge real quick. And I can go ahead and put that on. Actually, let's do this way. So now I've got my journal box. And the next thing I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a border or excuse me, a title down here. And I have been using um, some die cut letters um, fairly consistently throughout this series of layouts in this particular font that I really like. So I'm going to do that down here. Now, I also have a little bit of a thing going where everything is a play on words of the word snow. So this one is going to say... Um, snow done because this was our final last round of snowfall that we got so the next thing i'm going to do is um so other layouts would be like snow fun um snow buddies snow angels um things like that so i'm going to lay this down here i do have to overlap my letters a little bit because they don't quite fit on there so i want it to be um, keep that in mind when I'm putting them on here. I'm going to use repositionable adhesive. I don't press down super hard when I'm putting on the repositionable adhesive. It's, it sticks pretty well to the, um, the cardstock without having to push down. And I'm going to do, I do, do know from when I place these that I need to offset them a little bit and layer them a little bit too. So I'm going to come in here and do a little bit of a offset. And I know it's kind of the dark crimson on the navy, so it's a little bit more difficult to see. But getting those in there, a little bit of edge over from my adhesive, and that just rubs off from the cardstock. Super easy. One last letter. And 
I can tell my spacing is a little off. So once again, this is one of the reasons I really like using the repositionable adhesive. Let me get in there. I'm gonna make an adjustment. My W can actually come away from the edge of the cardstock a little bit. So I'm gonna start him over just a little bit more. Give him a little more space there. I'm pushing one up, pushing one over. It just gives it, I think, a little bit more fun look to it. And then, so now it says the snow. And now I'm going to use the, our script letters in white. I'm going to use those for the done part. And it's going to be done with an exclamation part because we were definitely done with the snow by then. Um, so I'm going to use, I think I'm just going to use all lowercase. So I'm going to start off with the exclamation point because I'm actually going to off center it a little bit. I like to have the top part centered and then it's going to say done exclamation part over here, exclamation point. So since I'm going to justify it on the right side, I'm going to go ahead and place my first letter or I mean, the exclamation point. I'm going to place it where I want it to go first since I'm building this direction. I use my um, multi-purpose tool. And when I'm putting this down, I am only gently pushing down right here on the very end. I'm leaving this top part not connect, not push down. So I could still slide my multi-purpose tool under there and lift it off if I need to. So I just give that little bit of uh, a touch on the bottom. And that makes it just easier if I have to make some adjustments, which I normally have to do. Another tip that you can do is you can use post-it notes to help you keep things aligned at the bottom. So one of the ways that I would do this is I would use a ruler and here's my centering ruler. I would come in here and I would say, I want this to be my bottom of my letters. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place a post-it note right here at the bottom. And that's gonna become where I'm resting the bottom of my letters. So the next letter I need to place is E because I need to spell this backwards. And I'm placing this a little bit lower. And it looks a little bit weird because of the exclamation point, but remember, I need to put that dot for the exclamation point. I don't dot my exclamation points or my I's or my J's or anything that has that extra piece that goes with it until I'm completely done because that's just one more piece I have to move later. The next letter is N. And with the script letters, I do usually try to connect them a little bit so that it kind of mimics maybe cursive handwriting. And then I need an O. And the O, once again, will connect a little bit with the N. And then I need a capital. I'm going to go ahead, I think, and use the capital letter. And now I've got a little bit of a conundrum here. So I'm not sure this D is pretty big. Oh, it looks like I'm going to be okay. Snow done. So I'm going to pull this away and I'm pretty happy with how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead, come back to my exclamation point and I'm going to grab my dot from the exclamation point and put it in place. So there is snow done and my um, journal box is up here. I might go ahead with um, a few um, uh, snowflakes up here, maybe in the red, I might put some white snowflakes down here. 
I could add a little bit more details now that I see it all put together. I will build my second page before I do that. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to build the base to my second page very much the same way I built that. And then I'm going to come back and show you how I put my photos on for the second page because I use a different arrangement here. So just a second, I'll be right back. All right, thanks for standing by. I have the second page of my two page layout assembled. I did the same background pattern as I showed before. This time though, I did use all nine of my um, frost decorative paper squares. So for this um, side of the layout, I decided to go with a traditional, what I would call a pinwheel layout or pinwheel um, photo arrangement. So I have two vertical images. My photos are four and three quarters wide, or excuse me, three and three quarters inch wide by four and three quarters tall. They started out as four by fives, but I wasn't able to, once I matted them, that they were taking up too much of the pattern. You couldn't see the, um, the pretty paper in the background at all. And then I have two horizontal photos as well. And as you can see, we did have a lot of snow. There was snow as far as you can see, five inches that we had gotten that night. This is shows accumulation of over two weeks of snow though. So here is what I'm going for. Um, I have the um, photos matted on the navy. The navy is four and one eighth by five and one eighth. And then I've got that thin crimson of four and three eighths by five and three eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and adhere these down. Once again, I'm not going to press down super hard. I'm just going to put them on there real lightly. I'm pretty confident where they're going, but if I just lightly place them for now, I can double check my positioning when I have all of them on there and then give them that firm pressure in place. So this one needs to come over just a little bit. This one needs to come down. So there, I am pretty comfortable with this. Push everything down. And then I will go ahead and show you what both pages look like together. I do need to do a little bit of journaling in that one journal box that we made. But there is my two page layout. It's very linear in design, um, but the sketch was very linear in design as well. So um, this is a great option. I um, How to just carry it over into a second page. This pinwheel formation is great. You could have done um, squares. You could have done a whole lot over there on that side. So I hope you enjoyed the video that you're inspired to go ahead and give that sketch a try. It is a great sketch. Um, it's on the Creative Memories blog for the November 2020 sketch. It is sketch number one for the November 2020 virtual crop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.